Hey, what is up, guys? This is Corb, and today we have a replay submitted by Mr. Burb here on the blue team. And apparently, we are fit to see, well, yes, a ridiculous application of the damage sharing tech on sledgehammers in this match. Right? So I'm pretty goddamn excited. Let's see who we're actually up against here. We're up against a fang opener from Jorg on red. He's playing his elite special. Did he spend his stat in cash on a marksman? My god. I guess he did. You know, the maximum pickup certainly isn't the worst. Um, I guess it's fine. I don't know. See how it pans out. Let's go ahead and speed up. We got a whole ton of arc lights here coming out on Burb's side. I like the last minute pickup of Chaff. I think that's actually fine. I think I probably would have opted for two sets of crawlers myself. One here, one here. Um, yeah. And go from there. I suppose it's nice to have faster movement speed chaff as well if you're starting off with arc lights and sledgehammers. You don't want your opponent to just buy a couple of units of storm callers and just delete your mid game. Um, nice and easy. Having those faster crawler units does a pretty damn good job of distracting the likes of stormies. This level 2 maximum is actually doing work though, dude. There's such a low unit count army, every shot really just counts for so, so much. Yeah, this is going to be a loss, right? The maximum is just too strong. He's just dinking. All right, dude. So this guy's already got it at maximum with success. Hmm. It's going to be more chaffy coming on your side, right? What do we got here, man? Oh, there's extended range Vulcan, Electromag, Steel Ball. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I actually agree with the skip on that. On both fronts, both people actually skip in the end. Go with more maximum here. Hang on, what the hell? This is your opponent's starting formation? Just a whole bunch of fangs? Dude, I'd be really happy to see you come out uh, on blue here with at least one unit. Like, I don't know, like crawlers here. Storm crawlers just right here in the middle. It's probably what I'd opt for. Seeing how grouped up these guys are as well in the mid. Oh my god. Like, this is just screaming out for, uh, for storm crawlers, in my view, but hey. We go into a billion more tanks and no more chaff. That is a huge missile. Bit sad that didn't connect more over in this direction and just hit a bigger mass of units, but that's okay, I guess. And you know, oh God, do you actually take this win? Is it just too many tanks? Just these level two maximum are so goddamn strong, dude. You know, I don't even know if you take this, man. Like, you got a big numbers advantage here, but look at these maximum. They're just devastating. Yeah, this is why me personally, I would have opted into some more crawlers uh, early on. Just getting like a baseline chaff laid down. But you know what? It's games like this that memes are made of, right? Hmm. Missile strike. It is enough to kill a couple maxmen. Improve five out control. I don't know, man. Missile strike is an option, I suppose. Yeah, I think I like the Missile Strike, just because of how bunched he is. Or you can put it here and uh, drop a couple of Maximum to like 2% health. Your opponent is just going mental with the Maximum, dude. Plus range as well. Oh my god. Yeah, he's not even going to defend himself uh, against the Missile either. So you got 600 Supply left. You actually go ahead and unlock the Fangs. Okay. I think that's fine too. The only reason I would lean away from Fangs is again because of the slow movement speed on these guys and I just feel like crawlers would make for better chaff units. Particularly like, yeah, there we go, that's what I'm talking about, man. I think that that's the player right there. Um, okay, you got 250 supply left. Yeah, I think this is fair to do right now. You don't need to go too crazy. Barrier, try and protect your opponent's missile. I think that's overall a pretty damn smart turn. Missile lands with incredible effect. You saved 50 supply, I believe, there. Instead of dropping the nuts uh, on like another sentry missile, which I suppose you're expecting your opponent to drop some barriers, right? So, but you know what, man? You might just have enough tanks to just make this happen now. Yeah, not actually that close. Oh my god! I tell you what, though, the difference the chaff made on this side compared to last round was crazy. And look at all those levels that we're getting now. All right, now we're talking, man. Now we're in this. It's got to be a laser sight. Ooh. You know, Fort on a Mission could actually be really excellent. If you're going a very, very heavy sledgehammer build, um, particularly if you've already picked up Mechanical Ridge, I feel like Fort on a Mission is just really grand because you get into combat so quickly uh, with the sledgehammers anyway that you can get a lot of value out of that. 
Maybe you'll decide. Oh, oh okay, dude. Advanced firepower control it is. <laughs> I can respect it. Ooh. What is this? Okay, what is this pivot, dude? All right. I mean, I guess having some anti-air is uh, is pretty crucial, too. I'm a bit surprised to see the firepower control come out on these guys, but maybe it's actually quite smart, right? If you get range on these things, with firepower control, they actually do a pretty good job of chunking down sledgehammers themselves. So you know what? I actually like that. I didn't consider that at all, but I think I actually like that. All right. It's just a lot of maxmen on this guy's uh, side of the board now. It's going to be very tight over here. In fact, it's going to be decimation over here. And I don't think you kill these guys quick enough. Um, Before these guys arrive and distract all your nerds. Man, tight. But it ain't going to end well. Oh, this guy low health. Dude. All right, man, what a chad. Oh, God. Let me slow the game speed down a bit. Okay, there we go. Subsidized crawler, super heavy armor. Super heavy armor tanks is always juicy, it's always succulent, it's always awesome. Especially if you're gonna go shared health as well. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see this get picked up. Otherwise, eh, intensive training is also pretty sweet. I could also respect a skip too, to be honest. Don't think there's much value in these two. Super heavy armor it is, all right, man. Babe is the kind of guy, he just sees an expensive item and says, screw it, I'll make it work. That's exactly what we did right here, that's what we're doing with the heavy armor, dude. These are 32k health sledgehammers right now. It's already looking pretty damn devastating. So I wonder where the supply will go here. It was just a ton of upgrades, right? No tech upgrades just yet. Don't think. Although I would I wouldn't have been surprised to see range. Come out on the stangs just yet. It's another upgrade on the arc lights. Yeah, the high mobility is so good, dude. That's so good for the sledgehammers. Okay. Ooh. Your opponent is responding, however. With, uh, with his mechanical rage. This should be a massive tank showdown by the end of this. What is this man? Mechabellum or world of tanks, you know? Okay, dude. I think that you just mulch him on this side. I don't think there's any chance that you lose over here. Uh, just because of the heavy armor. Uh, and the and the super powerful items you have over here. I don't know, man. I can't see it. Mechanical rage will it make that much of a difference. I'm not sure. This side is a bit more sketch. Yeah, these level 3 maxmen are a real, real pain in the ass now, dude. You know what? This side's really tight too, man. These tanks are pretty, are pretty rough to take down. And no, man, you're going to kill all this chef, but it's not quite going to be enough. Dude, I thought that you'd have this side. Did he buy more chaff that I didn't notice? More fangs or something? No, it was just mechanical rage. Okay. I think that this is good enough to get top supply specialist here. I wouldn't begrudge you going amplifying call though. You do seem like that kind of guy. Okay, there it is. Top supply special comes out. Yeah, the plus damage on this maximum. It is one-shotting most of the tank units over there. Oh, yo, yo. Dude, this is insanity. Okay, man, we go field maintenance. I like that. I like the plus attack too. Yeah, I agree with everything that we've done here. I think that this is all pretty sweet. Yeah, I think this is all. Uh, yeah, I think this all is pretty sweet. Still, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you the truth. I don't know, dude. I really feel like a couple of stone callers would be really, really helpful here, man. One here, one here, maybe one in the middle, even as well. I feel like they'd be pretty devastating against this many stat champions when they all stop moving like this, bro. They would get mulched, mulched, dude. The stangs as well are doing work, you know. That's a plus range upgrade on just one unit of stangs. And you know what? I think it's absolutely worth it. Those stangs are actually like the hidden hero over here. Oh, yo, 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 yo. What the hell happened over here, dude? Building will go down. I guess you will have the firepower to win this one, though. With the plus range, these guys should die pretty quickly. Speed this up. There it is. All right, man. And so the tables turn, these stangs get another upgrade, these sledgehammers can hit level 4 next round, which is massive. Anytime you can get upgrades on uh, units that you have items on. So, so crucial that you do that. Makes the scaling just get absolutely out of control. Hold on coding. 
barrier, giant hunter, I don't know, these are all pretty poor, dude. Forward on coding, I guess there's a case to be mid. I guess. We're actually up for barrier, alright. Okay, yeah, you do have fortresses unlocked. There it is. I'm gonna drop the nuts over here. We gotta upgrade these tanks and these stangs though, surely. We got 550 supply left. Oro's money, another fortress comes out. Okay. We got barrier, the upgrade goes out on the tanks. That's 47,000 health now. Alright, dude. Alright, man. It's starting to get a little bit- Oh my god! Dude, what is your opponent doing? <laughs> oh my god, dude. Alright. I get it. I almost feel like your opponent would benefit if he just spammed more maxmen, like elite recruited and mass recruited more maxmen. Maybe even picked up uh, elite as well. I think that your opponent would have stood a better chance. Just because you're, you're like, your chaff units are a little bit thin. You're a little bit thin on chaff, right? But now, as a result, he's not going to have the damage, man, to really scratch these fortresses. Minus on this side. It's going to take him a while, but he will get this guy down. This guy's actually going to live, right? Okay, no, one more shot. Oh my god, it actually lives. That could be devastating. That could be devastating, man. Can these tanks level again? No, they can't. Alright, dude. Dude, this might end up being more of like a fortress focus video. Look at these carry upgrades, dude. What is this? Range, launch your overload and elite max, but... <laughs> oh my god. Okay, man, beautiful. I love it. I've actually got a fortress replay to watch after this one, man. We'll probably pair them together, I guess. Make a one swole video. Range specialist, gotta be done. There's no real question there, right? I mean, Acid Blast is tempting when guys are this grouped up, but I guess Range Specialist is too good. Uh, no matter what. What's your opponent doing? He's just spam leveling his tanks. Oh my word! Hang on, it's your opponent that goes for uh, damage sharing. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god, I thought it was you. Okay, this is a plot twist. Oh, bro. Is it gonna be mass damage sharing tanks? Versus carry fortresses. Because this is going to be a showdown, bro. Oh my god, it is. Oh my god, it is. Okay, alright, man. Alright. Dude, <laughs> do you win this game, babe? Actually, I, okay. Let's speed this up, man. I like the upgrades here. I like the upgrades here. I think that's all awesome. So this is where you see the damage sharing. I almost wish I had you in a call right now. So what were your thoughts at this moment? Blue. You know, okay. So we have one big bunch here, one big bunch here. Oh god, they've all got to die or none of them die. Okay, all the blues will die at the same time. Same on this side, too. Are you actually going to get them? Okay, they screwed over here, right? Right? This side is not even getting a scratch, by the way. These guys are all full. These guys are fit to explode. And once you take out one half, they're regenerating far less. So you just got to crack half of them. And then you have a fighting chance. Boom, there it is. But these guys are all full, bro. Look at this amalgam. Just an absolute amalgam of tanks, dude. These guys are a bit split off now from the rest of the herd. That's gonna hurt them a little bit, but oh, dude. Alright, man. I mean, you got a melting point. You have to. You've got to, man. Range melting point. One on either side. You just have a mass produced melting point. Even that's worth it. Drop a few of them. Even that's worth it. Oh. You go for over and bombard! Bam, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, Bam? Okay, man, maybe you go for the melting points anyway. You can afford it. Um, and it's absolutely necessary. Like, any other upgrades almost don't matter against this, right? I mean, it's melting point or electromag. Oh, you don't have it on your acolytes. You don't have it on your sledgehammers either. Okay, you go for damage sharing now. <laughs> what is this? No, you're spending all your money! Where's the melting points, dude? You can explode all of them in one fell swoop. Oh. Oh, dude. God, you still got nearly 1,200 supply left, man. Barrier, okay, cool. Dude, can these fortresses actually even win this encounter? 
For me, this would be an auto melting point buy. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm maybe I'm judging too soon. Maybe these fortresses are gonna own, dude. Okay, Storm Callers, they have Electromag available. There it is. There it is. Okay. Alright, man. We got this, man. The uh, the, the Storm Callers come out, albeit, I'd argue, like six rounds too late, but they're there. And they're here to do a job. And you know what? I think this is gonna be super, super effective too, right? This is gonna be super effective. The old bombard, I swear to god, they're just gonna heal all of the damage they take from that bombard, it's not gonna do anything. I'm go I'm kinda more curious to see how this fortress does against these nids. I mean it's deleting, dude. It's doing great. Stormcallers on this side, they really need to land a huge killer blow here, disable all this tech. There it is, that's massive. Oh, your fortress is locked on to a guy. Who hasn't been EMP'd though. Building's fit to go down, that helps a lot. Okay, there it is. There's the salvo that ends the game, right? Your opponent dead to this? I think he's dead, right? Yeah, this is too many units left, man. Alright, dude. Holy crap, what a game, man. What a game. Highs and lows, dude. Oh. <gasps> he's not dead. Oh yeah, of course that fortress died, so that was... Okay, alright, alright, man. It goes on for another round. Senior attack special. Oh, dude, you have no idea how much I would have loved to have seen just a few melting points with like range, and just and just see them. Ca oh my god, your opponent's responding with his own melting points. All right, dude. See, if I were your opponent here, by the way, just to throw in some tidbits, um, I'd probably plant a unit of crawlers like right here and have them run from here to here with the mobile beacon. I plant a unit of crawlers here. And I probably plant a unit of crawlers here too. Just to try and distract the storm callers as much as I can. Then it would be time to lock in high mobility. And probably enhanced range, because you're buffing so many units at that point. And you want your tanks to get in quick and get the job done before they sort of just get owned. You know, maybe unit of crawlers in the middle would distract both of these storm callers too, but. But alright, man. Ton of upgrades come out. We have an extra upgraded fortress here. The missile is going to do a ridiculous amount of work. Did we go range on the melting points? He did. I think that's really smart by Red. It'll keep them out of Stormcaller range, uh, most importantly. And so Red's just hoping that he latches on here, and it is going to happen. We have a bit more chaff left on this side. Oh, babe. Oh, no, dude. Oh, my God. Okay, one of them goes down. Oh, your fortress has got to kill stuff, dude. Did you t go into speed? You did go into mobility. That's good. No! No, dude. Hang on, are you alive? You're alive. You're actually going to live. Yeah, he can't kill you this round. Okay, let's speed, man. Oh, baby blue, dude. What are we going to do here, man? What's the plan, babe? What's what's going down? I've got nothing else. To, I've got nothing else to offer at this point. I feel like melting points would still actually be good for you, even now. Um, either that or just more storm callers, I guess. Tech spesh. Oh god, I don't know, man. Oh crap, what did you go for, man? Tech specialist, okay. Goes for tech spesh. Is that elite maxman just been picked up? No, that was picked up last turn. I, I, I guess I missed that. Okay, we go to the plus range, plus speed. Crawlers? I do like that. I think that's great. Oh my god, your opponent doesn't have crawler tech on his melting points. Oh, dude. What is he doing? Crawler tech's so good, man. Okay. There's all kinds of plus range in the acolytes. Dude, maybe just giving them rage enhancement too is, is totally fine, you know. Those are, these are some really powerful acolytes. Oh god. Oh, God. Dude, look, I've got to tell you the truth, man. I have missed games like this. I feel like I don't get games like this anymore, man. I feel like once you get above, like, the 1300, 1400 mark in terms of MMR, anything above that, games like this just don't exist anymore, you know? This is what it's all about, man. Like, this is what Machiavellum's made for, dude. Okay, massive EMP shots on the tanks. I think they're going to melt extremely, extremely fast here. Huge chunk of guys going down there. Same thing fit to go down here. Bam! Oh my god, dude. The tables have just completely turned. 
See, your opponent is melting, pointing all these guys down. Oh, God. Okay, man. But it's not going to matter, right? I don't think it matters. I think we lose on this side. Oh, my God, bro. Your fortress might actually live here, too. Oh, what a game, man. All right, this was a fun one, dude. Carry fortresses against mass linked sledges. Thanks so much for the submission, dude. Oh, my God. That was a damn good one. All right, man. On to the next one. And all right, we got this one with Mr. Rio Grande on the blue team here. Oh, hang on. It's the old team we're supposed to be following, but I guess we'll just watch it from blue perspective because I know it confuses you guys sometimes when uh, we switch perspective. So we're going to keep red on the top, blue on the bottom, and apparently we're going to get some more raid boss fortress action in this one. So I'm interested to see what tech uh, you're running over here on red. Mr. Tim, your opponent here is playing a quick supply specialist. An Opsra quadruple Mustang start. Which is, yeah, just really, really tough for pretty much everything to beat on turn one minus what? Like sledgehammer acolytes uh, from red. So not a whole lot you can do most of the time against quick supply. Ooh, hang on. Here it is. Okay, never mind. Heavy hacker, mass produce steel ball. Yeah, these are all a bit crap. Yeah. Fair enough. Ooh, we go straight into range on Tim's side of the map, which I think is actually excellent. Your opponent correctly identifying that you have a very, very uh, slow-moving army composition right now. So blue picking up a couple of stone callers. I like this too. I think this is actually perfect. This is the kind of player that I would make at least. Um, I probably wouldn't buy two of them. I'd hedge my bets just a little bit because um, you never know what your opponent's going to invest into. Um, and you want to stay flexible in the early game, but... As it is, blue goes into double stormies and it turns out that going into uh, this many Arclights with uh, plus range might get punished a little bit here, man. Your opponent actually took a risk by going double stormy and it looks like it's about going to work out, man. So this is a rough opener for red here. Certainly a rough opener. I should also point out as well that the steel balls have been sold uh, after a couple of purchases, or a couple of uses rather, of uh, field recovery. By Mr. Tim on red. Ooh. You know what, man? These storm uh, sorry, these acolytes are living a bit longer than I thought they would, really. Oh, God, the storm call is all distracted by one fang there. But all right. Oh, my God. This acolyte got, got way more work done than it had any right to do, but it does finally go down. Uh, at the hands of the double stormies. We have a lead fang, nano repair kit, barrier. Hmm. I actually have no idea what I would have selected there. Potentially a lead fang if I was playing red, so I can recruit level three fangs and sort of go from there. Um, I wonder if the fangs will get ranged this round or not, actually. Blue ops directly into a Vulcan. Gives it barrier against the fangs. Okay. I'm not sure how necessary this is. And oh my god, dude. It's like blue is like screen watching or something against Tim here on red. Like we're gonna get some crawlers down to distract the stone crawlers, and it's blue totally preempting this. I mean, it's a damn good read, to be fair. This is a common player, right? You get a couple of stone crawlers down, uh, keep them in the middle. It's not uncommon for your opponent to slam a, a unit of crawlers there. And they will distract for a little while, I guess, from uh, a couple of Stormcaller shots. Got 100 supply left here to spend on Tim's side. After an arc is upgraded, another Arclight comes down. All right, man. Oi, 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 dude. Oi, oi, oi. I do like the crawler pickup. I do like this idea. Maybe grabbing a unit of extra crawlers to arrive a little bit late into the fight. Would also be pretty grand. Level 1 stangs. Take a decent while to kill off level 2 crawlers. We are playing elite specialist on red, right? Yeah, we are. So it would be level 2 crawlers coming in late. I don't know. Maybe that would be better than dropping another Arclight at this point. But hey, it's an Arclight we opt for. I don't know, dude. Stone crawlers do so well into Arkies, dude. For like the whole game as well. They're just a pretty good answer overall. Okay. And so it's another bitter defeat, this time with a 400 health damage Vulcan coming out as well. Incendiary Bomb, ooh, is this where the Improved Fortress comes down? You just say, screw it. 
There it is, man. Improved Fortress comes out for red. All right, man. Tim's got a plan. And it involves the red boss, boys. Okay. So that's plus range on the Stangs. I think that's pretty damn good uh, from blue. I'm a bit surprised to see no tech upgrades come out from red at this point. I would imagine that these Fangs are not going to be used for anything minus maybe portable shield later on in the game if they don't receive any of the upgrades this turn. I guess Fangs are just not on the menu for what Tim is planning. Um... No shields going up against a possible uh, fire drop either. We're going to run the crawlers away this time. I like this. I think it's actually perfect movement, right? They shouldn't get caught at all by the Vulcan. They can do a much, much better job at distracting this time. Well, they would anyway, if not for the fire. All right, dude. It's just a crap load of arc lights with charged shot on the uh, red side of the map here. So they will plink down the barrier decently quickly. Ooh, no they won't. It's only the level 1 guy that's actually latched. Okay, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be rough. It's gonna be rough, man. This incendiary bomb. Really, really tough to contend with. Also hard to defend against, too. It's gotta be said. Given the variety of ways that he could have positioned that, Lightning Storm comes down. I wonder if we're gonna see a Lightning Storm come out from Tim. He opts not to. Okay. See, when I'm falling behind, I usually jump at the opportunity. To pick up stuff like that. Tim goes ahead and unlocks the fortress. This is a 700 cost fortress, by the way. So this is a big gamba, dude. It's a big gamba. It's improved fortress. Let's look at the tech options. Okay. I like the rocker punch. I respect that a lot. Not so many carry options on the fortress. Minus the range and the rocker punch, though. So we'll see, dude. It is also coming, obviously, with Nano Repair Kit. So it's going to be pretty damn durable. We're running the crawlers away this time. So this is going to be the swing round, right? It's going to be the swing round. I don't think your opponent has any obvious tricks up their sleeve now uh, on blue. And so Tim on the red side. Probably looking to make a pretty substantial comeback in this round. This fortress is going to live a long time. And blue really doesn't have the tools to kill off a nano repair fortress. And because of the way the Vulcan is positioned as well... It might even just be farming kills on the Vulcan for the whole round. Ooh, the sneaky uh, Phoenix comes out on the flank. I actually didn't spot that, but look at that, dude. It's not even going to be enough. Not even going to be enough, man. Even with the uh, EMP effect from the building going down, it's just not going to do enough, dude. Now, the Phoenix is obviously making it impossible for Tim to win this one, but he also can't really lose either, right? This thing is not going to go down, even with everything focus firing it. Where the hell did these crawlers come from? These some super late arrivals, dude. What is this? <laughs> the building going down is going to buy this guy a lot of time to regen. Because he's taking no damage. And I guess the round is just going to end up timing out. Oh my god, it's so funny. Even the crawlers might live. Okay, not all of them. A couple of them might live. Alright, let's get ahead. Well, I gotta tell you, alright, it's got to be melting point time for uh, blue. He actually just doesn't have a choice. Nothing else will kill uh, this fortress at this point, right? It's almost level 3 even as well. Wow, I mean, laser sight's melting point. It's gotta be, right? It's just gotta be. There it is. Melting point comes down. What's Tim gonna opt for, though? What the hell is Tim gonna opt for, man? Went for laser sight's what? Oh, there's a maxman back there. Okay, this one maxman alone won't be enough to take care of these guys. I'm a bit surprised to not see Mustangs come down uh, rather than maxman, to be honest, but. But okay, dude. Oh my god, I think this melting point is a little bit too far forwards, to be honest. Perhaps just a little bit too far forwards. Uh, yeah, that is a barrier upgrade coming out on the Fortress as well. We should probably point that out too. But yeah, the reason I would opt for Mustangs if I was on red right now to uh, guard against any more Phoenix flanks that could happen is because they act as further chaff against Maxman and against Stormcallers. Um, whereas going a Maxman unit, yes, they deal the Phoenixes very, very nicely, but your opponent has a lot of uh, smaller chaff units on the ground as well. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I, I sort of feel like the Maxman is going to get a little bit caught up attacking these packs of Stangs rather than hitting the high-value targets, which is the Phoenixes and the Maxman units. I think your opponent actually sold the unit of Phoenixes there. He didn't reposition them, he sold them. 
But alright, dude. Will this guy get to connect? Currently, it's hitting crawlers. Your opponent is screaming right now, dude. He's screaming at his screen. Why Why is it attacking here and not here, dude? I'd actually be screaming too. <laughs> but okay, it is going to latch eventually. There it is. This is going to be a level 3 fortress next round, though. So this is going to get serious pretty quickly. Um, I'm guessing we're also just going to be spamming more fortresses next round on red, which is the next big concern. Um, especially if you give them, like, fang production, so they just have more protection against uh, being targeted. By the melting points? Oh my god, are we going to have a huge comeback on our hands here if Tim actually took this on red? Uh, Rhino Assault Missile Strike. I'd like a Missile Strike here, personally. All right, man, we going big dick, dude. Vulcan Descent. Yeah, I just I just feel like a Missile Strike here. Just taking out something that's very unlikely to be defended. Maybe these stangs at the back. That would be totally fine. So I'm totally expecting Fang Protection and potentially another Fortress to come down here. We're going to drop the Vulcan on this side. I think that's good. We'll connect with the uh, stangs pretty easily. Probably kill the Maxman too. Probably won't get the kill on this guy, though. I think it'll die too quickly. Okay, all right. I wouldn't also be opposed to seeing uh, some flank action come out here from red. Just dropping, like, a unit of fangs here and, like, a unit of fangs here. Just to pull these Mustangs away. You know what I'm saying? Um, and this just opens up the maximum much, much more to uh, dying to the Acolytes. It's a very slow build still from Tim too. Maybe uh, 50 supply on the high mobility every round is also just totally worth it as well. I haven't seen either players really push these buttons much just yet. All right, Tim. Okay, there's the plus move speed. I love it. Maybe I've been missing that. Maybe you have been pushing that button. Tim actually goes into plus range as well. I do like that. I think it's actually grand. Extra crawlers to arrive in behind the fortress. Okay, I guess that's the alternative to going Fang Production. It might just work, you know. Blue goes plus range as well. That's plus range on the fangs. Ooh, I'd be a little bit reticent about doing that. Uh, who has longer range now, the fangs or the fortress? Okay, so the fangs, because of the plus range, now outrange the fortress, which makes it so that... The fortress is going to move ahead of the fang units now. Going plus range isn't always uh, isn't always the best idea for that reason. Sometimes you want units to uh, to move ahead. You know what I'm saying? But you know what? This might just be enough crawlers to to buy enough time. You're gonna absolutely delete the enemy Vulcan. Oh my god, we don't quite get the kill on this maximum over here. That's a bit sad. Oh my god, dude, this fortress doesn't give a damn. Okay, it's hit a little bit of a critical mass, and even though it is pushing ahead of the uh, fangs, there's nothing left alive on the map that can actually kill it. Opponent relying on just one melting point, definitely quite risky. And he's paying the cost, dude. How much health has he got? Okay, yeah, this is still a steep comeback, you know. It's gonna be like a couple more rounds, man, to actually take this, right? Oh my god, nuke becomes available. Heavy hackers, giant hunter, orbital bombard. Okay, yeah, I knew blue was gonna go ult. Because this is something Tim was talking about. That the ult, uh, that, that the nuke is no match for his godly fortress. So I knew that that power was coming. Orbital bombard here, I really like this. That's actually really smart. Opponent's less likely to defend his flanks from something like this, so... Still really shocked to not see Fang Production come out. Um, but I guess we're just going the Crawler Chaff route at this point. Does your opponent have Crawler Production on his Melting Points? He doesn't. But he's just going to go mass Melting Points. Not sure how I feel about that, man. I think where I blew in this situation, I just have another Melting Point nice and far back. I like to think I'd be running Crawler Production on my Melting Points too. Um, just to have that steady stream of... Chaff arriving to uh, to slow my opponent down and to help prevent his fortress from connecting on my uh, on my melting points. Oi, 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 oi. I don't know about all this, dude. Oh god, also the Stormcallers haven't been upgraded all game on blue either. 
But at least Blue decided to barrier the correct side. He's got that going for him, man. So the fire here is going to pose a pretty decent uh, threat to killing off all of the crawlers too quick. But this, is just gonna, this thing's just going to get two shot too quickly, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, barely a scratch from that nuke, dude. This fortress just doesn't give a damn. It just doesn't care, dude. <laughs> oh my god. All right, Ben. All right. Dude, see, it's in games like this, I sort of wish that you had the ability to tech into... Um, oh, well, Javelin is so devastating here, dude. Are you kidding me? An oh, well, Javelin right here. Oh, you're dropping it on that side. See, I just plunk it right here, man. Like, with that Vulcan dead? Like, if you killed this Vulcan with an orbital jav? How does he kill these crawlers, dude? He doesn't. He's just relying on Stangs to slowly try and kill him off, you know? And by then, his goddamn melting point is almost dead already from the javelin. And your fortress just one-shots it. So, I don't know, dude. I feel jav here would have been absolutely perfect, but... Hey, man, we take it out, the guy with the, uh... What the hell is this called again? His module... Okay, dude. We got more late arriving chaff over here. I like this a lot. Still would have liked to have seen some stuff drop down on the flanks uh, from red over here. And blue actually opts into Electromag Barrage. Yeah. Um. I don't know, dude. I can't. I, I don't think that's it. I don't think that's it, man. I really don't think that's it. God, I mean, you know what, man? Even if even if blue kills this fortress, these Arclites are no joke either. And these Sangs will not stand a chance against the Arkies, man. I don't know, dude. I don't know about this. Look how quick this guy died anyway, dude. Like, who am I fooling? The barriers is keeping these guys mostly safe, at least, until the fire gets them dead. Yep, nope. Yeah, this fortress ain't gonna die, man. It's just not killable. Is it over here? I think I think th I think he's still alive. Oh my god. Oh my god, Rin Spesh. Instantly with Rin Spesh for Tim. Alright, dude. Alright man. 1300 supply to burn. I'm guessing we're gonna see uh, enhanced range and high mobility come out again. Chaff coming off your opponent. Okay. Yeah, I just, I just, I, I don't know, dude. I, I, I don't think this is recoverable for Blue at this point. How would you actually save this? How would you deal with this? This helps. I'm a huge, huge believer in just setting up uh, flanks to distract your opponent's chaff if they have, like, backline chaff units like this. Uh, having flanking nerds just to pull them away for a while and buy you some time. Is, uh, is very, very crucial. I almost feel like maybe, I don't know, upgrade both of these Stormcallers, perhaps? Upgrade both of these Stormcallers, then mass recruit a whole bunch more Stormcallers and go, like, Incendiary Bomb? Maybe? Or do you need Incendiary Bomb and Electromag? Or do you need Range and Electromag? I don't know, if these Stormcallers have been pushed much, much harder, maybe Blue would have a shot against this. Because there's no air units. Uh, that threaten blue, right? So he's totally free to just spam as many storm callers as he likes. The Mustangs would, for the most part, keep the storm callers relatively safe as well. So maybe that would be the answer for blue. I don't know, but that's probably what I'd lean towards uh, personally if I were trying to counter this. What else we got here? So we do actually go into fang production eventually on this uh, fortress. Do fortresses produce fangs at the same level as the fortress? Or do they come out as level 1 fangs? I think they might come out as level 1. And if they do, then... Might not be the best tech buy super late on. Yeah, they're just level 1 fangs. I do like the barrier pickup on the fangs, though. I think that that's actually uh, huge. Oh my god, it just one shot at the enemy Vulcan. And... Bonk. Almost two-shotted the level 2 melting point. Yeah, this is no stopping this raid boss now, dude. This is no stopping. But see what I mean about having, like, a melting point position further back? It would have helped Blue uh, quite a lot, I think. 
at least would have given it a fighting chance of connecting. Like, this melting point being this far forward so, so dicey, man. And the red boss doesn't give a damn. He's gonna punish shit like that. Alright, man. Good game, dude. I like these whole melting point, uh... Sorry, melting point. These whole fortress raid boss videos, man. They always give me a little bit of a tickle. Remind me of the earlier days of Mecha Vellum, you know? Um, when meme builds and stuff were much more common, man. Anyways, hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, everybody. And I shall catch all of you all just a tad bit later, man.